people let us look at few more questions on the sinus paranasal sinuses look at this carcinoma maxillary sinus they have given the stage at stage 3 okay how will you treat treatment of choice they are asking so basically if you remember stage 1 stage 2 what have they told stage 1 stage 2 will be surgery or radiation so stage 1 and stage 2 will be surgery or radiation okay then t3 usually means stage 3 only so they are saying t3 what will you do t3 t4 you will combine radiation and surgery surgery plus actually they have written radiation plus surgery in the textbook we will always go with that only radiation plus surgery or surgery plus radiation okay so for us the question here is t3 t3 is stage 3 so answer should be surgery and radiotherapy so let us look at the answer here it should be surgery plus radiotherapy okay this is the correct answer so basically what do you mean by t3 n0 m0 i think it's m n0 m0 right not o o okay so t 3 means tumor invades the bone of the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus subcutaneous tissues floor or medial wall of orbit pterygoid fossa or ethmoidal ethmoid sinus so this is t3 so it has gone beyond the maxillary sinus isn't it now what is n0 n0 is no regional lymph node metastasis what is m0 no distant metastasis okay so that's all you have here in this uh, question now look at this question adenocarcinoma of ethmoid sinus occurs commonly in so they're talking about malignancy here adenocarcinoma of ethmoid sinus they're talking about the ethmoid sinus occurs commonly in where is this ethmoid sinus so ethmoid sinus are here so now adenocarcinoma of these will occur in whom right so the options are fire workers, chimney workers, watchmakers, wood workers. The answer is wood workers. Let's see why. The textbook just says whoever is exposed to wood dust, right? They are uh, prone to adenocarcinoma of ethmoid. Okay, that's all the textbook says. Some other information if you want to know. If you are in nickel refining, you will have squamous cell and anaplastic carcinoma. But anyways, we are only concerned with adenocarcinoma here, right? Very easy question here. Wood workers are associated uh, sinus carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, isn't it? This is the correct answer. Answer is 1. You can see it here. Answer is 1. Okay. Next question looks like all these questions are related to neoplasm only most common site of osteoma is the options are all the four sinus paranasal sinus so what do you think osteoma bone bone guys for some reason it is frontal sinus which is affected most frequent location okay not sure why they didn't explain but yes osteoma frontal sinus frontoethmoidal all that okay Basically, osteoma you have already seen even in uh, the ear, isn't it? In ear also we have seen this word osteoma. So basically external ear, in that the benign condition osteoma we have seen. So finally we just want to say that they did not give the cause or reason or anything. Basically frontal sinus seems to be having osteoma. Okay most common site osteoma in these four options otherwise osteoma in ENT you have also studied in um, the external ear canal okay look at this question now guys um, wake up look at this question pneumato seal is seen in fracture of fracture of what will you see here pneumato seal so maxillary sinus frontal same four sinus they have given think an air contained stuff fracture of air what is the answer Two frontal sinus frontal sinus has so many problems or what okay 
fracture they are saying fracture of what the bones of the frontal sinus okay a question here on fungal sinusitis this is allergic fungal sinusitis AFS all of the following are diagnostic criteria except except question guys you need to know the wrong statement okay areas of high attenuation on CT scan orbital invasion diagnostic criteria they are looking for the diagnostic criteria allergic eosinophilic mucin type 1 hypersensitivity so basically this type 1 hypersensitivity sounds like a very generic term isn't it what is diagnostic criteria about it look at let's look at the answer directly answer is 2 orbital invasion so orbital invasion is not a diagnostic criteria of allergic fungal sinusitis but the others are areas of high attenuation on CT scan allergic eosinophilic mucin type 1 hypersensitivity so allergy is type 1 hypersensitivity so they are saying okay fine let's go with it allergic eosinophilic mucin CT scan x-ray CT scan we have already seen all this in fungal sinusitis they seem to be talking about it as a diagnostic technique isn't it so orbital invasion they are not happy with it basically they are saying that allergic um, condition this is is not invasive okay so that is their justification for it this is not going to be invasive okay shall we move on to yet another question how is it going guys okay a patient with sinus infection develops chemosis bilateral proptosis and fever the diagnosis goes in favor of so bilateral proptosis guys two nerves both sides are involved looks like fever that is some infection yes infection is already written here chemosis chemosis means what swelling of the conjunctiva I never knew this word swelling or edema of conjunctiva is chemosis okay so both things are related to eye right chemosis proptosis so the options here are lateral sinus thrombosis frontal lobe abscess cavernous sinus thrombosis meningitis somehow it tells me that it is cavernous sinus thrombosis and yes the answer is cavernous sinus thrombosis so basically the sinus infection has now spread into the cavernous sinus sad right okay cavernous sinus shown here so angular vein shown here isn't it so if you look at the cavernous sinus inside the skull basically this is looking you're looking at it from superior view here you have the pituitary gland around it you have the cavernous sinus right so inside the cavernous sinus so many structures are there like you have the internal carotid artery oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve abducens nerve trigeminal so you have so many nerves oculomotor is what three cranial nerve three trochlear cranial nerve four trigeminal is what five abducens six three four five six so you can see here this is going to be a cavernous sinus and they contain the nerves isn't it cranial nerve three four five six so because of all these uh, nerves why proptosis why does it occur which cranial nerve mainly they are blaming here 3 4 6 okay because uh, of all these eye symptoms 3 4 6 okay so they are blaming out of 3 4 5 and 6 actually you should write it like roman numbers okay 3 4 5 and 6 they are blaming for this proptosis and all what are they blaming for the eye symptoms 3 4 and 6 they are blaming what can I undo this yes 3 4 and 6 they are blaming what does 5 do trigeminal that is sensory only trigeminal is actually a mixed nerve but here they are saying that only the sensory part will be affected right so they are blaming mainly the 3 4 and 6 nerves okay so other things that can be there will be like pupil becomes dilated fixed optic disc shows congestion and edema with diminution of vision okay so 
in complications of sinusitis there are intracranial complications if, if you remember right in complications of sinusitis we have seen different types of complications right in that we have seen intracranial complications in that we had mentioned cavernous sinus thrombosis okay usually this is because of the <coughs> frontal ethmoidal and sphenoid sinuses okay these are closely related to the anterior cranial fossa and infection can lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis which one are they not blaming maxillary maxillary they are not blaming at all okay for intracranial complication maxillary is not uh, taking any blame from intracranial complication so let's highlight this one cavernous sinus thrombosis I think this much is enough for now in paranasal sinuses MCQs. Okay. We'll meet you in the next video, guys. Bye.